I'd like to be an explorer, like the Great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. Wrong. There's still so much to see and discover, Truman. While it is true that the days of setting sail on wooden ships and discovering new lands is somewhat behind us, and almost every inch of land have been mapped, photographed, tracked to some extent, we still even scratch the surface of what is to be found. Even just below those wooden ships waits something new to be seen. The oceans cover about 70% of the entire planet, yet still a vast majority of it have not been explored. In fact, it's estimated that 80% of the oceans have been unobserved, unexplored, and unmapped. But now you might be saying to yourself, there's nothing there, so what's the point? Oh, how wrong you sound, random person I made up. The deep sea is home to some of the Earth's most unusual landscapes, including hydrothermal vents that spew superheated, water-rich with minerals, which create unique ecosystems thousands of feet below the surface. What's even crazier is that the ocean floor contains more mountains, valleys, and volcanoes than all of the Earth's continents. Now, what lives in these ecosystems? It is said that about 242,000 known and described marine species live in the world's ocean. But that number is just forever growing because marine animals continue to be discovered and named by the current average of 2,332 new species per year. In fact, just two weeks ago at the time of this recording, scientists have identified a new type of wrasse in the, oh my lord, <laughs> Rivella Gedo? Archipelago. I got that one. Located in the tropical eastern Pacific Ocean, which is near Mexico. This newly discovered fish is called the tailspot wrasse. Scientists estimate that millions of undiscovered species could live in the Earth's ocean, ranging from microscopic species to large sea creatures. This means with each expedition, one new species is most likely going to be found. Okay, but if you want a place to start searching for these sea creatures, there's an area that we call the Twilight, twilight zone. zone. The ocean's Twilight Zone stretches from 200 to 1,000 meters, or 650 56 feet to 3,280 feet for all my cold-blooded Americans out there um, below the surface. It's always dim, and although it's one of the largest habitats on Earth, it's also one of the least explored. The area is bustling with life, though. Recent research indicates that the amount of fish living in the Twilight Zone could be 10 times higher than what was believed before, potentially surpassing the total biomass found in the rest of the ocean combined. Here are some photos of creatures you can expect in your next expedition down to the Twilight Zone. Don't you just want to give them a big old kiss? <laughs> As a little side note, while staying in the theme of travel and movies, did you know that James Cameron, you know the guy that sank the big boat, um, between 1995 and 2012, spearheaded eight significant expeditions into the deep sea. On these explorations, he personally went to the Titanic 33 times, like the actual record. Not the, not the movie set. This means he dedicated over hundreds of hours to maneuvering compact remotely operated vehicles he crafted himself. Yes, that he crafted himself. I mean, Avatar 2 was pretty meh, but <laughs> you can't deny James Cameron isn't one cool cat. Okay, but maybe water isn't your thing. It certainly wasn't Truman's for a while. <laughs> Don't want to take your chances on a death tube being controlled by a video game controller. I get it, I get it. How about what's left to be discovered on land? Like I said before, almost every inch of land has been tracked, mapped, and photographed. I mean, just pull up Google Earth and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. However, fancy satellites can only do so much. All the time, people are making voyages to lands unknown and finding new things. And there's no better environment to demonstrate the current human desire for exploration than the Earth's most dense jungle, or one of the Earth's most dense jungle. Just on February 23rd of this year, researchers from the University of Queensland ventured into the Ecuadorian Amazon at the invitation of the Warani people in pursuit of a new species a snake. Not my personal <laughs> go-to animal to discover, but you know, to one's their own. Especially for Queensland, I, I get it, I get it. What they found was the northern green anaconda, which is believed to be the largest of its kind. And did you, did you see that guy? I mean, <laughs> just absolutely sending it. Normal clothes on, just swimming in that thing. Wow, wow. People are crazy. But again, those are just animals. Still a lot of those to be found. But what I find more fascinating is the fact that in 2024, there's still a lot of uncontacted humans on the planet. The Valle do Havari, sorry if I've mispronounced that, I, I try, I really do, region in Brazil is home to around 3,000 indigenous humans from various tribes. Additionally, there's an estimated 2,000 individuals from at least 14 different uncontacted tribes in this region. These tribes are believed to inhabit deep within the reservation's territories, living across 19 villages 
that have been identified from aerial surveillance. According to Fabricio Amorin of the Fundación Nacional de Indio. Thank you. <laughs> this area boasts the highest concentration of isolated indigenous groups in both the Amazon and the entire world. Isn't it just weird to think that there's people out there not doom scrolling on TikTok? I mean, how does one survive without Family Guy and Subway Surfers side by side? I mean, what do you, what do you even do with your day? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is said that more than a hundred uncontacted tribes exist today. The actual number could be higher since these communities are highly secluded, preferring isolation to protect their life, cultures, and lands. But that does mean there's so many aspects to these uncontacted people that there is to explore. I mean, within these unexplored regions, there could be languages that are just unknown to the entire world. Discovering them could provide insight into the human capacity for language and cultural diversity. Guy. I mean, just look at the Khoisan click language to really see how large of a range there is between languages. I will say though, even though it kind of goes against the whole idea of the video, it is best most times to keep these uncontacted tribes uncontacted. The biggest example for this argument in terms of like recognition, I think is the North Sentinel Islands. The island's indigenous people have remained isolated for thousands of years, fiercely defending their territory against outsiders. But this is very necessary for their survival because their lack of immunity to common diseases means even minimal contact with the outside world could lead to their decimation from illness to which they have no defense. There have been past attempts at contact, but those have resulted in violence and fatalities on both sides, underscoring the grave risks involved. I mean, you've probably seen YouTube videos about this, it's talked about a lot. By honoring their resistance and isolation, we acknowledge the importance of their cultural sovereignty and the right to live undisturbed, according to their ancestral ways. This approach not only respected their autonomy, but also prevents the tragic consequences of forced contact, protecting the integrity and the diversity of human cultures. But I get social anxiety when talking to people and legless lizards scare me. So where can you go that has none of these things, but you can still scratch that itch for exploration? Space. Space. The final frontier holds an almost infinite number of mysteries and unexplored regions. Despite our significant advances in space exploration, the vast majority of the universe is still nowhere near explored. Within the immense size of the observable universe, scientists estimate the existence of approximately 2 trillion galaxies. Each of these galaxies hosts billions, if not trillions of stars, around which revolve an even greater number of planets. Astronomers estimate that the universe could contain up to one septillion stars. Stars. <laughs> That's the number one followed by 24 zeros. Our Milky Way alone contains a hundred billion, with a B, a hundred billion. The observable universe itself stretches out to be about 46 billion light years in the every conceivable direction from Earth. This vast distance encompasses all that we can see and measure, yet is merely a portion of the full universe, which extends far beyond the limits of our current observational capabilities. The regions that lie beyond this observable limit remain shrouded in mystery potentially containing parts of the cosmos that could radically alter our understanding of the universe's overall structure and the fundamental laws of physics. Despite the incredible advancements in technology, including telescopes that allow us to observe galaxies billions of light years away, and spacecraft that venture to the outer reaches of our solar system, the evidence of life beyond Earth eludes us. Among these countless celestial bodies, scientists have identified planets within the habitable zones of their stars, areas where the conditions could potentially support life as we know it. The search is particularly focused on identifying microbial life or indicators of its existence on planets and moons closer to home, such as Mars with its past water flows, or Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, which is believed to harbor a subsurface ocean beneath its icy crust. As our exploratory tools become more sophisticated, we continue to discover exoplanets in the habitable zones of their respective stars at an increasing rate. To date, thousands of these exoplanets have been cataloged, each representing a potential site for future study in the quest to find evidence in the universe besides our own. These discoveries serve to underscore our tiny presence in the grand scheme of the universe, a cosmos filled with uncannable wonders, mysteries, and potentialities that dwarf our earthly concerns and achievements. The cosmos invites us to ponder profound questions about life's rarity, the conditions that foster it, and the universe's ultimate nature. Each new discovery, from the detection of habitable zone planets to the observation of phenomena billions of light years away, as a piece to the puzzle of the cosmos. As mere specks within the unimaginable vast universe, our quest of knowledge and understanding propels us forward, even eager to uncover the secrets that the universe holds. Okay, so that was a lot. <laughs> but to be honest, to fulfill your wonderlust, 
It really doesn't have to be that complicated. You don't have to discover something that's never been seen before. You can honestly explore the most travel destinations on the planet and still find fulfillment and something new about yourself. Traveling abroad honestly transforms the way we see the world. It's hard to fully understand the vastness of our planet and even more so the universe without experiencing it firsthand in a place that's entirely unfamiliar. There's an unreplaceable sensation that comes from being a location where in, in the grand scheme of things, you realize how small and unimportant you are, and yet it feels liberating. But don't get me wrong, traveling is no miracle cure. Exploring different parts of the globe doesn't automatically improve who you are, nor does leaving your home guarantee immediate joy. A sense of emptiness that follows you cannot be remedied simply by changing locations. True inner peace is only achieved when you choose to engage with and assist others to make a personal transformation. Hell, you don't even have to go abroad. You don't even have to leave your state or even your city i mean just just try stuff new like try new things go to a different restaurant you've never tried before hopefully something that's like of a food that you haven't tried before as well take a class on something that you've always wanted to learn like a cooking class or yoga or whatever you want heck even just <laughs> go to a different grocery store sometimes just to get out of that funk that i mean i know i've had and just just try new things it really does help i will say but i want to clarify i'm not perfect by any means i'm not I'm not trying to be preachy, I'm not trying to <laughs> sell you a course. I don't do new things every day, every week, I mean hell, even sometimes every month. But what I'm trying to get across is all my experiences until this point have shown that when I travel, when I do new things, when I meet new people is when I'm the happiest. When I feel like my life has grown the most in terms of the right direction, like for the better, is when I'm traveling. I mean, there's a lot of things I gotta better at. I mean. Like all of us, none of us are perfect, but I hope watching this last part, if you made it this far, spikes, not spikes, sparks something in you. And you go out, try new things, hopefully travel, explore new things. But again, just try something new, you know, and see, see how you feel. Because there's always something new to find and explore. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah. I am happy and mentally sane. I pinky promise. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's, the, that's the outro.